Well, that is an iconic image known to all of fandom now, and one of the guys, one of the people most responsible, hey James. Hello. James Kerwin, co-writer and director of Fairest of Them All for Star Trek Continues. Yes. As well as a lot of other credits that we'll talk about. Uh, Yesterday Was a Lie, and the upcoming RUR, for one thing. But, um... <laughs> How did you get involved with, uh, with Continues and doing this episode? Because you're obviously in from the roots there, more or less. Yeah. Um, basically, it, it's, it's a pretty simple story. I directed a film called Are You Our Genesis, a short film, which is a prelude to a feature we have in development. Um, I directed Are You Our Genesis last year, and I cast Vic Mignogna in it. And in the process of production, Vic was telling me about how he does a Star Trek fan film. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, I was like, oh, uh, fan film, great. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, you want to be a part of it? I was like, eh, nah, nah. and then I watched it and I was like, holy crap, yeah, I want to be a part of this. Yeah, yeah. So that's it. And he now he's credited with the story, and yes. then you co-wrote the script. So yes. was this was that all, you came into it, his idea, and then? Uh, well, yeah, basically, what happened was he told me that he had a mirror universe yeah. story um, that he wanted fleshed out into a teleplay. Now um, let's, let's stop right there. Did you know what he meant when he said he had a Mirror Universe story, James? Yes. I mean, do you have any kind of fan cred here on this? Uh... I don't know if I have cred, but yes, I know what he meant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know for a fact you have a very <laughs> deep running, yeah. <laughs> In the cooperative nature of this baby that is, that is uh, Vic's passion play as executive producer, what are some things that you, you still like to point out to and say, well, this, I'm proud that I brought this to it, or this is one of my... Well, one of, one, of the things, one of the things that I wanted to do was was storyboard the entire episode, so um, and just be pay extremely careful attention to the way that shot composition was used mm -hmm. in the original mm -hmm. series. Um, never to move the camera in a way that they couldn't or wouldn't have moved the camera, right, right. and to replicate moves that they frequently used. Um, so I storyboarded the entire thing. Now, ultimately, this is television, so the executive producer has the final say. So everything was run past Vic. And right. some of the things we, we changed, but we collaborated on it and agreed on the changes. Right. And um, I'm just really proud of the way that it turned out. I'm really proud of the way that Matt Busey, our DP, mm -hmm. color grades the footage to look exactly like 1960s film stock. Um, <laughs> You know, we put yeah. grain on it so it looks just like that. Um, even in this particular episode, we had enough footage from the first two at this point that we could do the end titles correctly, the end credits, uh -huh. with the stills in the background. Um, and I paid very careful attention to the way that optical printing techniques were used in the late 60s. The judder um, that was created when you, when you ran the film through the optical printer multiple times to put the titles on there, uh -huh. we replicated all that stuff. So even if an audience member isn't consciously aware of that stuff, it's little things like that to subconsciously say, oh, this looks very much like it was something that was shot in the late 60s. Yeah. Well, the, and the other bit was, uh, we were talking about this is fourth season, which is the, the general conceit of Star Trek Continues, but this really comes off as a direct sequel to Mirror mm -hmm. Mirror, which was, as we said, second mm -hmm. season. So mm -hmm. that little subtle choice of using yellow uh, yes. titles instead mm -hmm. of the light blue mm -hmm. was, I remember there was a little debate going yeah. back and forth, yeah. and I, I was one who was in favor of the yellow, and yeah. I'm glad to see you went that way. Yes, Just, yeah, it, it, the, the, this, yeah, it's a little complicated <laughs> because this is a fourth season episode as if at some point in the fourth season they decided to go back in time a little bit to the second season. Right. And so so we had to balance those It's a things. complete standalone because it's yeah, yeah, right. the follow on to the mirror. Right. But anyway, I still thought the yellow letters were, yeah. a, were a fun They're little great. choice there. Yeah, Yeah. well, the decision was made um, in the mirror universe to have a scene. Um, well, uh, in, in earlier drafts of the script, there was a scene in the briefing room, a uh, big fight scene between Kirk and Spock and... The decision was made that you know that would be difficult to choreograph because of a huge table, so we changed right. it to the rec room. But then we kind of thought, you know, Vic said there wouldn't be a recreational room in the mirror universe. There wouldn't be any recreation. Yeah. So what could this be? What would be the equivalent? And I thought of maybe like an officers' lodge, an officers' club. Um, yeah, yeah. And so we uh, we put little little um, Easter eggs in the background, hang on the wall, the officers' club, and uh, kind of created that set. Um, as the mirror universe version of the rec room. Now that you mention, I have a hard time seeing a briefing room in the mirror universe too. Like they're all going to sit around and, and talk, have a talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> no, do what I say. Right. Yeah. What 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 was the biggest challenge that you prepped for that didn't turn out the way you thought? Either a surprise or something went 
far easier than you thought. I wouldn't say that anything turned out in a way that we had. I yeah. mean, this was very well planned. I was going to say, I don't. You know? My days there, I don't remember anything really disarmingly no. bad. I just, but it's still just yeah. a, a pleasant surprise. Where, oh, and then so we'll make an adjustment and move on. But I, I didn't know if anything. Uh, Nothing really stands out. out. Yeah. Nothing really stands out. You know, the Tandless Field was great, well constructed by Will Smith, and the wall with, by Royal Weaver, and the way that the, the thing slid up and down. That was that was kind mm -hmm. of difficult to get right. But once we got it right, it worked. Yeah. Um, you know. Uh, and you have to zoom into the Tantalus field whenever the thing slides up because there's actually a bar. If you watch it from mirror mirror, that thing could never have actually opened like that because there was a ledge above it. But <laughs> so we cut around that. Little we, magic of yeah, Hollywood yeah, exactly. again. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, what was the what was the biggest challenge, whether planned or not? Shooting, scheduling, building, arranging. I would say that... I mean, you had a whole, like you said, you had a whole different le level of logistics in. The set had to be redressed. The yeah. costumes were different, so... I, I would say one of the... I wouldn't say the biggest, but one of the biggest challenges was the costumes. Um, because, like I said, we could not use any of our stock costumes for this. Mm -hmm. Not only are they Mirror Universe, but they're Mirror Universe second season. So they had to be made out of a cotton velour fabric, which very few people make anymore. Right. Um, velour is all made of polyester now and it has that little sparkly look. Even if you look at professionally made Star Trek uniforms, they all sparkle under the lights. In the original series, they did not do that because they were made of cotton. So um, Ginger Holly, our wardrobe supervisor, mm -hmm. had to get specially... Had, I mean, she, she was able to locate the red fabric, but she was not able to locate the gold or the blue. So she had to get white and then dye it. And she dyed it so many times, and she would show it to Vic and I, and we'd say, it's a little less blue, no, a little more blue, a little more yellow, <laughs> and just went through costume after costume after yeah. costume. Plus, in this one, we had multiple female costumes, right. um, which had to each be custom made. In the original Mirror Mirror, there's only two female costumes, it's Ahura and Marlena. This one, we had Ahura, Marlena, Smith, the nurse, Palmer, the relief communications officer who's in the background. Mm -hmm. So we had five different mi mi uh, mirror female uniforms, including a yellow one, which you never saw in the original series. Right, right. So right. that was a challenge to make, because those things have to be custom fit to each individual actor. So yeah, right. I would say, and, and, and of course, Kirk's tunic was different. Spock mm -hmm. had, had a dress uniform. All that stuff had to be custom made. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, 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 it all looks awesome, and the... Uh... I, I remember just watching the guys just painting the, the dagger planets, you know, the dagger earths yeah. on all the oh, doors. Yeah. That yeah, just, the logos that, everywhere. Something uh -huh. as simple as that that everybody expects mm -hmm. just was uh -huh. time the, consuming. The, the consoles yeah. were in different places in the transporter room in season two than they mm -hmm. were in season three. So we had to change the wall. I mean, even the walls were in different places. We had to make all those adjustments. So. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, one thing, it's 40 minutes, which is considerably yes. less than, yes. I mean, was that, did you time it out to that or no. did it just clip along so fast? No. That, um, and, you know, people ask about that a lot. People have been asking about that online. And, look, we, 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 we try to do the original series as close as we can. And, yes, right, television right. back then was 50 minutes. Television today is 40 minutes. Right. Um, the, the, that has kind of been decided upon by the industry as the consensus length of a television drama. Well, it's called more commercials. It's called more commercials, <laughs> yes. But I also believe that, to, a, to an extent, it makes things tighter. Mm -hmm. um, and in this particular store, and, and, if, and if, in fact, you watch TOS in syndication on television, you see about 10 minutes cut out of every right. episode. Right. Um, and uh, this episode just clipped along at a pace that 40 minutes is just how it turned out to be. We decided from the beginning we're not going to be slaves to a broadcast length. We don't need to be. This is an online series. It's never going to be a television series. Right. You know, these episodes are not going to be broadcast on television. It's a web series. So... Let's just make it the length that the story needs to be. So the script actually was 53 pages, but the story clipped along so quickly, um, and a little bit of material between Ahura and Smith was cut, actually, in post, that we felt was slowing the pace down mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, so um, 40 minutes just turned out to be the ideal length to tell this story, and we're happy with it. Mm. So that missing Smith-Uhura footage is... Great for a deleted scene bonus feature <laughs> it's sometime, a, it's or a tiny little conversation that just <laughs> that that we, we felt just it just slowed the pace down. Yeah, it's not yeah, necessary. Yeah. You know? I'm just so. speaking for the completists yeah. <laughs> out there that want all deleted scenes ever <laughs> yeah, made exactly, to show exactly. up sometime. Yeah. Time well spent. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. you you're in the middle of working on our your genesis. Uh, this was kind of a 
not a detour, but a fun, a fun, where, where does this come down for you as far it as was the, great. the flow it, it of was your great life? Fun. It was a lot of work. <laughs> it was great fun. Um, and I was really blown away by the fact that, you know, this team has been assembled to do something strictly out of love, not for profit, strictly out of love for mm -hmm. Star Trek. Um, and, uh, that, that's why I did it. And that's what makes it worthwhile. Right. So, uh, industry fans or friends of yours, uh, comments from people you respect or, I mean, you don't have to name anybody, the, the but people, I mean, just, the people yeah. that I've shown it to, I mean, the, as we're recording this interview, it just came out. So a lot of people haven't seen it yet, but the people who have seen it have all had really, really, really high praise for it, which is, is nice. It's flattering. It's makes me happy right. because right. we work very hard on this one. Right. Well, it's like, uh, you know, um, I mean, I know it's gotten to the point where do we, do we, is it even fair to say a fan film anymore? I mean, well, it is. Yeah, on one hand, you have to keep peace with, say, right. CBS because right. it can't right. be obviously right. for profit, but right. still. You know, and Vic and I have talked about it. And we, we call it is a fan film, and we don't want to start getting into the it's not a fan film. No, it's a fan film. Yeah. Um, or calling it like an indie right. fan film or an online right. whatever indie, you, want. you know. Whatever. I mean, it, it's a fan film. It's not a licensed thing. That's not what we're trying to be. It's not, it's not about that. It's just out of love for the original series, wishing that we could have seen it continue when we were kids and, 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 and doing as best we can with it. Right. Um, and something you're not ashamed to put in your demo room? Absolutely. Yeah. No, not at all. Yeah. In your clips. Well, very good. Thanks for uh, sitting down and uh, talking to uh, Trekland. Uh,